Facebook, how are you? It is Dr. Swickle, podiatrist, human movement specialist, founder of EBFA Global, author of Barefoot Strong, and inventor of Noboso. I wanted to do a video to speak about stem cells, the appropriateness of stem cells with plantar fasciitis, fasciosis, and fascial tears, and how you can get better success with these injections based off of your post-injection protocol. Now, in New York City, where I practice, my office, which is called the Center for Functional and Regenerative Podiatric Medicine, I specialize in functional movement, functional medicine, and regenerative medicine as it relates to foot and ankle conditions and from the ground up movement pathology. And a lot of my practice is built around doing stem cell injections or uh, growth factor injections, regenerative medicine injections for chronic uh, tissue injuries such as plantar fascial tears, plantar plate tears, different ligament tears, and uh, tendon tears. And what I find is that sometimes patients come in having a history of doing some of these injections, maybe even a PRP injection, and not having good success. And they then come in a little bit skeptical of some of the results that I'm seeing with my patients, and are they going to get those results again? Now, what I do emphasize is that it's not really the injection itself that is where the magic happens. It's more what you're doing after you do the injection. So anytime a patient comes in saying they've done PRP or stem cells, no success, or maybe like a 20% improvement, I then start asking them about what was that post-injection protocol. If they were injected and then they just started ambulating and doing their regular activities, I know for sure they're not going to get the success from those injections. What you do after an injection is super, super important. This is, of course, for any joint that you're injecting, but being a specialist in the foot and the ankle and being uh, ambulatory, especially in New York City, taking thousands and thousands of steps a day, we need to make sure we're doing an appropriate post-injection protocol. So what do I do? What is my post-injection protocol? Let's say you come to my office and you have a partial tear of your plantar fascia. Maybe you have some fraying. Typically, it's in the central band. Um, it might be the superficial fibers or the deep fibers. I will then do uh, a series of two injections. They're done two weeks apart, so you're getting two injections total. Now, the injection is your choice. You could do either a dehydrated stem cell, and again, I'm loosely using the word stem cell um, because it's more growth factors that is what that injection is, dehydrated, or we're doing cryopreserved. The price is different. Um, the efficacy really, in my opinion, is quite similar, but the price is a little bit different. Some patients prefer the cryopreserved because it's a more um, stable, pure, purified uh, component. So just know there's two options. We would agree on the injections that you would do, and then we would do the injections, two injections, each two weeks apart, so two total, you would be in a cam walker for a period of four weeks. Perhaps you're also in an arch strap um, for that four weeks. You are not using the night splint during that period, and you are not to take anything anti-inflammatory, no NSAIDs, you cannot ice. And I actually do restrict patients on taking omegas and having a high anti-inflammatory diet for that period as well. So I want to trigger that acute injury response. After we do the two injections, I then put you in a uh, controlled environment, a less controlled environment, maybe a stiff shoe. I do use Hoka a lot for that. Um, Orthofeed has a really good shoe that is restrictive. And then um, Reshod has a good shoe. Dansko has a good shoe. And then we're transitioning you into that environment. Or maybe we're using custom orthotics if you have those in the past. But we're trying to slowly transition you for four more weeks in a slightly less restrictive environment. We keep you in that period for that four weeks, and we start to introduce gradually stress to the foot. Maybe we will do you know, some squats. Obviously, you're walking, but we're doing squats. See how you respond to that. Nothing in a flexed position, so no lunges, and then, of course, nothing dynamic. So you're not running and you're not doing lunges, let's say and you are doing myofascial release during that entire period of the soleus. You can do a little bit of the plantar fascia, not too proximal, and then we start to introduce a night splint. 
after that, my third month is transitioning you into even less control. So let's say you were in a stiff shoe, we would get you into a more transitional shoe, uh, maybe like an ultra or um, a minimus, uh, even a Nike free, you could go into something that has a little bit of kind of restriction of torsion, but no counters, no stiff midsole. If you were using a transition orthotic, we would get you out of the orthotic and we would start to see how you do there. Still doing the myofascial release, still starting to introduce the squatting and the core and the glutes, but you do want to make sure that you're not pushing it too fast. If we then introduce you into that more uh, controlled environment for month three, and you're doing the squats and the strengthening, and now you can start introducing a little bit of the short foot and the foot to core, and you tolerate it fine, then we start to introduce into month four the um, more dynamics. So could we actually start doing um, a little bit of a jump? How do you tolerate when we do a little bit jump? If you are a runner in month four, can we go for a little bit of a jog and then 48 hours, see how you feel. If you feel fine, you can repeat that small distance. I mean, we're talking like a mile right, that you're running, see how you respond to that. And then throughout month four, we start to control and ramp up the amount of stress that you're placing on your foot. From initial injection all the way from good to go, you're rocking and you're back to, you know, your obstacle course races or doing your, your 5Ks or CrossFit or whatever it is that you're doing. That would be really by month six is what I expect for that patient from them coming in with plantar fascial tear to back to whatever their activity that they love to do. Six month recovery might seem super, super long, but where those patients are coming in with their history of plantar fascial issues, most of them are super happy with that. My success rate with these injections and with my post injection protocol is 90%. So that again is not on the weight of the injection. Yes, they are necessary. We need to get the growth factors into our tissue to stimulate the fibroblasts, but it's more so what are we doing from a controlled stress perspective after that injection, those six months. Now I will mention that I do a repeat MRI at three months because the peak efficacy of these injections is three months. A majority of my patients, again, 90% success rate, when we do the repeat MRI, it'll actually show healed plantar fascial tear or um, minimal plantar fascial tear, reduction in fraying plantar fascia. So we're seeing positive changes in the MRI, so that would be quantifiable. And then the patient is coming back saying subjectively, I don't have pain in my foot anymore. I'm able to do the box jumps, do my class run, and I don't have that pain that I've had for two, three years that now I'm so glad that I did these stem cell injections. So if you have a patient or you yourself are dealing with a chronic fascial issue, maybe chronic plantar fasciitis, fasciosis, or you've actually had an MRI that was read as a partial tear or frayn, and you've been considering or open to, or it's been suggested that you do either stem cells or PRP was mentioned to you, please do make sure that you're doing the appropriate post-injection protocol for those success. If you want to learn more about how I practice, please visit my website, DrMelisDuckel.com, and I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions. I also do virtual consultations with patients. Thank you so much, and have an amazing day.